You're welcome back. Now, one person has died and several others injured following a collision between a Kia truck, a Yutong bus, and another vehicle. The accident occurred at 4 a.m. in a town called Krotechi in the Kintampo South District. Now, six of the injured are, re are currently receiving treatment at the Holy Family Hospital, while the rest have been sent to the Kintampo Government Hospital. Let's get some more details on the story. Anas Abit is with Gaskia FM, our affiliate station in the Bonafo region. Anas, uh, give, tell us exactly what happened with this accident and what's happening with those who are injured and are receiving treatment. Uh, Francis, at about uh, 4 a.m., uh, a Kia truck collided, truck, which is loaded with uh, uh, gallons of engine oil, collided at a sharp curve uh, in the uh, district. And then uh, you thought unaware of the earlier collision in, in and then uh, hit the, the uh, line on the uh, street, leading to the death of the driver of the U-turn bus. Uh, as we speak now, we have six of the injured uh, responding to treatment at the Holy Family Hospital. Number on, we, are, we are on certain number, uh, which are currently government hospital also as treatment. We went to the Holy Family Hospital. Anas, if, okay, it seems we've lost Anas on the line. We'll try and re-establish contact with them and I get to understand what kind of injuries these people have suffered. Well, the pictures we're showing on, your, on the screens now are the vehicles involved in that very uh, sad incident. One person has already been confirmed dead and others injured in this accident. We know for that stretch in the Bonafu region, we've seen a number of incidents of uh, motor accidents in that region. Remember that infamous one that had more than 40 people uh, injured. Some also died. Over 30 died, in fact, on the Kentamporo. Let's now speak to Nanaya Akwada. He's with the Bureau of Public Safety to get an understanding of why this major highway is claiming so many lives and what we need to do to ensure that we see less carnage on our roads, specifically in that region. Mr. Akwada, good afternoon and thanks for joining us here on The Pulse. Yeah, good afternoon and good afternoon to your viewers. We've already had uh, incidents on that stretch of uh, that highway in the Bonafu region. Now we're learning of another accident today on the Kintampo Road. What do you make of the spate of carnage we're seeing on our roads on that highway today? Um, well, I would rather want to speak on the spate of carnage on Ghana's road um, without restricting myself to just the Kintampo Road. Um, I think that something is missing. Because there are several factors that can contribute or trigger or lead to a road um, incident. It could be the road design, it could be an engineering problem, it could be driver behavior, it could be sometimes even the motor vehicle itself. But one thing that we cannot take out in all of this while we are looking for a solution is education. Educating the motoring public, educating the driver. We cannot take this one out. And I think that to the extent that you want to look at this, that within such a short period, there's been, you know, two major incidents on a stretch of road that has taken life, not life, life. You want to find out what the regulators, what the law enforcement agencies have put in place. The last time um, there was an incident there, I think we all got taken away, uh, got carried away by um, the response of um, emergency service without thinking of the rule, how we are going to stem the time. And so probably this is another um, wake-up call to all of us to begin to ask the right questions as in what is law enforcement agencies doing about um, that stretch of proof? Will it be, could it be over speeding? Could it be, um, uh, as it were, um, poor education on the side of drivers? Mm. Could it be something related to the design of the road? What exactly could it be? We need National Road Safety Commission to also come into this. And 
it must be a multi-sectoral approach to this in order to solve it. There are other, um, we call it the red zone roads in Ghana. There are other red roads in Ghana that we have all lost sight of because they are not major, major accidents taking life. Maybe they, they involve private cars, one life, two life, three life. But there are roads in Ghana today that are still claiming Ghanaian life every week. And the National Road Safety Commission must, and the MCTD must be able to identify such roads and make them public. Yes, okay, the but again, but again, Mr. Koda, in all of this, much as the um, the MTTD for the police service, the National Road Safety Commission needs to do their job. How about the drivers themselves and the kind of driving we're seeing on highways today? Wrong overtaking, speeding at very very high levels. How do we address that problem? Beyond just looking at the stakeholders and the law enforcement, how do we deal with the attitude of drivers when it comes to how they handle themselves on the roads today? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. I, I think that I, I did not, I, I mentioned that earlier when I talked about driver education. That is one. The second aspect is putting in place corrective measures. In Ghana today, I have not seen, I'm 40 and heading towards my 50. I have not seen anybody lose his license for reckless driving or consistently driving reckless. As a nation, we must come to that stage where people lose their licenses for committing repetitive errors on the road. That is one way that we are going to clean our roads. We are going to ensure sanity on our roads. And I think that once we embark on education, we must also strengthen the punitive aspect of our system. If that is not done, we can go ahead and do several legislation. There will be people who will be bad just to break law. And I have said this morning at the meeting, we said that Ghana is sitting on road because the recklessness on our road is just too much. All right. Uh, thank you so much for attending, Akwada, for sharing your thoughts with us on what we're seeing, the carnage we're seeing on our roads in the country today. That particular stretch in Kintampo has claimed well over 60 lives in this year alone. Big questions being asked as to how, as a country, we can deal with the carnage we're seeing on our highways in Ghana today. That's something that we'll ponder on in the coming days. But let me quickly go back to uh, our Facebook page, try and get an understanding of what you've still been talking about. I've seen a lot more of your comments coming in on our feed uh, on the Jai News page. Just read more of your comments here uh, that you sent us. Uh, Guy Carl Jumosapong is speaking on uh, the APC getting its license. He says, why should the party in opposition support the ruling government? What really makes you a party? Join them. And he chuckles. Uh, just after writing that comment. Uh, a lot more are writing about that very emotional story uh, on the brutalization of that 16-year-old boy. Um, Suit Up Nation says, 21st century Ghana. Still, leave, still living in the Stone Age era. Yaya Imori says, oh my God, on, not until we do thorough background checks on applicants. Okay, I think I've read that already. Uh, but some more of your comments have come to. Let me read some of them at this point. Uh, Comfort Atendana says, oh, that means there is no security in Ghana. Those who are to protect us are rather killing us. God have mercy. Bernard Bedibuama says, can justice work for this, my earthly brother who has been vandalized, okay, you mean brutalized by men who claim to enforce our laws, wish a savior will come to his aid in Jesus' name. Amen. That's a prayer for him. Fatima Ibrahim Babangida says, heartless animals calling themselves soldiers. Again, Keep it decent so I can read them. Apologies for reading that. Uh, Ayini Joseph says, same thing also going on in Nigeria here. Same story is what we're hearing. Kofi Obambapa says, oh my God, this is sad. So what are we doing to these barbaric soldiers? Uh, Omar Anamzoya Ahmed says, both acts are condemnable. And John Opoku Asante asks a very interesting question. We smokers in the army, God help us. Thank you for your comments. As I said, keep them coming. I'll read your comments as soon when you bring it. Okay, more coming in right now. 
Uh, Sir Guy GH tweets and says, these soldiers must not be set free. Inhuman is what you, you, uh, you uh, describe the actions meted out, meted out to the 16-year-old boy. Thank you for your comments. We'll read more uh, after we do sports here on The Pulse. But still ahead on the program, there's a very interesting story I've seen uh, about how a Nigerian MP got a hefty slap of her life from an aide of the prison's boss in Nigeria. I've got details for you, plus more here on The Pulse. Stay with us.